Well, this week, Russia began their invasion of Ukraine. President Putin launched the attack with support from allies like Belarus and Tucker Carlson. <laughs> Many analysts were surprised Putin went through with the invasion, even though it was obviously going to be a colossal mistake. But he couldn't back down after all that buildup. Kind of like how NBC still had to go through with airing the Winter Olympics. <laughs> Experts on Russian politics are saying that economic sanctions in the West will not deter Putin because his money is in non-traditional assets that are difficult to trace. Uh, so on top of everything else awful about Putin, he's also into crypto. <laughs> After the invasion of Ukraine, the Russian stock market fell by 30 percent to negative 90 percent. <laughs> This is a tough subject to make jokes about. I mean, in my lifetime, I've seen footage of attacks like this on other countries, but never a white one. <laughs> I don't know very much about this whole situation, but I have a close friend who's Russian, and I asked her what she thought about it, and she said, Michael, you know paid me to talk, baby. <laughs> but I'm, I am... <laughs> Impressed by all the Ukrainian citizens signing up to defend their country, even the famous ones. Imagine that here. If you ever read on the news, Michael Che has joined an American war, we have just lost that war. <laughs> One of the first places Russian forces seized when invading Ukraine was Chernobyl, the site of the 1986 nuclear disaster. Said Ukrainians, oh no, don't take that. <laughs> Capturing Chernobyl is like landing an audition for Harvey Weinstein now. <laughs> Donald Trump, great transition. <laughs> Donald Trump praised Vladimir Putin moving troops into Ukraine, saying, this is genius. Though this is genius is also how he sarcastically introduces Eric. <laughs> Judge Katanji Brown Jackson, seen here getting tired of y'all's foolishness, <laughs> was, nom <laughs> was nominated by President Biden to become the first black woman on the Supreme Court. The nomination for... Yeah. The nomination fulfills Biden's promise to change the subject. You clapped too early. <laughs> Biden chose Jackson after interviewing three finalists this week. Weird, I thought interviewing black candidates was just for show, said the NFL. <laughs> A new book claims that while Donald Trump was president, White House staff routinely found wads of paper clogging the toilet. So either he tried to flush classified documents or he eats the wrappers. <laughs> In the days after New York Mayor Eric Adams announced a new plan to stop violence in the city's transit system, six people were stabbed on the subway. And I think I speak for all New Yorkers when I say, that sounds pretty low. It was reported that Buckingham Palace staff have been mocking Prince Andrew with a nursery rhyme. Said Prince Andrew, ooh, nursery. <laughs> Officials have posthumously stripped Medina Spirit of his Kentucky Derby victory for failing a post-race drug test. And I just want to say to Medina Spirit, I hope it's hot and horse hell, you cheating bastard. <laughs> Medina Spirit sounds like a Tyler Perry character. <laughs> <laughs> a dog in California that went missing 12 years ago was found and returned to her owner after spending more than a decade living at Dave's taxidermy shop. <laughs> a man... A man in Iran went to the hospital after he got a double-A battery stuck inside his penis. It was double-A because that's the sound he makes when it goes in. Ah! Ah! This year marks the 50th anniversary of one of Marvel Comics' first black superheroes, Luke Cage. In the comics, Luke Cage faces off against black people's most powerful enemy of the 1970s, lead paint. <laughs> Police arrested twin sisters after they got mad at a restaurant worker and shot him in the face. This according to Peacock's very dark reboot of Sister, Sister. 
this week, the FDA granted the first condom approved for anal sex. It took them this long because their wives would only let them test it on their birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get it? <laughs> Researchers have observed a nearly 60-foot-tall rogue wave off the coast of British Columbia, which is the largest ever recorded. Researchers believe the wave was generated when Yo Mama fell overboard. <laughs> well, we're now at the point where at every press conference, the president's asked, will there be a nuclear war? A journalist asked President Biden if we should be worried about nuclear war, and he said, no. Because what's he going to say? Hell yeah, man. <laughs> Start digging a bunker, Jack. It's like when a little kid asks you where Grampy's going to go when he dies. You know, obviously, you're going to say heaven. But based on some of the stuff Grampy said, you know hell is also on the table. <laughs> some military experts have been surprised that despite having superior firepower, the Russian army has been slowed by aging equipment, poor motivation, and inept leadership. So, basically, they're the Lakers. <laughs> Germany is now joining the EU to send arms to Ukraine, which is the first time Germany has ramped up military production since that little six-year gap in their history books. <laughs> French President Emmanuel Macron said that after a tense 90-minute call with Vladimir Putin, he's convinced that the worst is yet to come. Man, it's amazing how much suffering could have been avoided if Putin was just a few inches taller. <laughs> Senator Lindsey Graham, who gives this exact same look at the urinal... <laughs> ...created a controversy on Twitter by suggesting that Russians should end the war in Ukraine by assassinating Vladimir Putin. It is a shocking, disgusting example of Lindsey Graham being kind of right about something. <laughs> Governors in several states, including New Hampshire, Ohio, and Utah, have banned the sale of Russian-made vodka. No word yet on brides. <laughs> Many of the members of Congress attending the State of the Union wore blue and yellow to show their support for Ukraine, while Kamala Harris wore all brown to do what she's done for the last year, disappear into the background. <laughs> Florida Governor Ron DeSantis seen here being told someone's pronouns. <laughs> yeah. DeSantis yelled at students behind him at an indoor event to take off their masks, saying, stop with this COVID theater. And there's nothing more on brand for conservatives than a dad screaming at boys to give up theater. Starting on Monday, New York City will no longer require bars and restaurants to pretend to look at vaccination cards. <laughs> The city, the city will be lifting its vaccine mandate for indoor dining and events. Finally, said the next variant. <laughs> Serena Williams criticized the New York Times after it mistakenly printed a picture of her sister, Venus Williams, and labeled it as Serena. Worse, the Times then sent an apology letter to Wendy Williams. <laughs> Fans of the hit HBO show Euphoria have been harshly criticizing the series' creator for sexualizing the high school characters. Plus, it's just not accurate. I mean, take it from me, no one has sex in high school. <laughs> don't, don't applaud that much. The House voted to award the Congressional Gold Medal to the only all-female black unit to serve in World War II. And Tyler Perry plays them all in his new film, <laughs> Inglorious Bastards. <laughs> Dubai has opened the Museum of the Future, which attempts to show what the world will be like in 50 years. And let's just say the museum does not feature a polar bear exhibit. <laughs> A new study finds that 11% of American adults are afraid of the dark, especially if that dark is behind them at the ATM. <laughs> 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 
Duncan has announced a new beverage called the Shamrock Macchiato, which combines espresso, vanilla, and Irish cream. It's the festive sugary drink that will have you saying top o the morning and losing the bottom o your leg. <laughs> A man in Times Square returned a lost wallet filled with $4,000 cash to its rightful owner. When told how much money was in the returned wallet, the man replied... <laughs> Pat, Pat Sajak is asking Wheel of Fortune fans to stop making fun of the two contestants who were unable to solve an easy puzzle, saying, quote, have a little heart. Or, as the contestants would guess, haze a nipple heave. <laughs> Tuesday was National Pig Day, but I told that to a pig and he handcuffed me. According to a new study, just one drink a day may shrink overall volume of your brain. Though I think I speak for all alcohol enthusiasts when I say, buh? <laughs>